thumbs down that single-handedly crushed his party's push to repeal and replace Obamacare. John McCain's last big moment in the political spotlight captured so many of the complexities of his character. A stubborn man who survived many a brush with death, who spent a lifetime looking for moments to shine as a leader and put country first. Yet forever a hot dog fighter pilot with dramatic flair and white knuckle political instincts. John Sidney McCain III was born with a storied legacy of service to live up to. His father and grandfather were both four-star admirals. His father and his grandfather instilled in him a sense of duty, honor, and country. Young McCain's passion was literature. He was a voracious reader all his life. Hemingway has always been my, my favorite author in many ways. Uh, a larger-than-life figure that I always admired a lot. Yet McCain followed the path of larger-than-life figures in his own family, enrolling at the Naval Academy, where he stood out for being a troublemaker, not a future leader. I'm the guy that stood fifth from the bottom of his class at the Naval Academy. <laughs> <laughs> he became a fighter pilot. His first combat mission during the Vietnam War was aboard the USS Forrestal. <laughs> On deck, his plane was accidentally struck by a missile causing a huge inferno. 134 fellow sailors died. A few months later, McCain was on a routine bombing mission. His plane was shot down. I was gyrating very violently, almost straight down, so I had to eject very quickly. I was knocked unconscious. He found himself surrounded by angry villagers swinging bayonets. The North Vietnamese forced him to give this interview in exchange for life-saving treatment. I'm treated well here. He was taken as a prisoner of war and tortured. He was beaten on a regular basis, uh, you know, being hung uh, by his arms uh, from a, uh, a ceiling, sockets uh, pulled out. When his father, Jack McCain, was named commander of U.S. Pacific Forces, the Vietnamese offered John McCain freedom. He refused. It would have broken POW protocol, release in order of capture. There was a correlation between my refusal to accept early release and my treatment. The treatment got very much worse. Ultimately, they broke McCain, getting him to sign a statement admitting to claims against him, which he regretted the rest of his life. After he signed it, I think he wanted just to die. Because he felt so disloyal. He felt, he felt shame that he had let the country down. Finally, after nearly five and a half years in prison, McCain was released. You still see the impact of that today, the way he was tied, you know, the way he can't raise his arms, his hands can't comb his hair, the things that we take for granted. His marriage to first wife Carol, who waited anxiously for McCain while imprisoned, fell apart. Captain McCain became a naval liaison to the U.S. Senate where he caught the political bug. In 1982, he ran for the House from Arizona, home with new wife Cindy, and won. John McCain. Four years later, it was on to the U.S. Senate. Early on, controversy, the Keating Five. McCain and four other senators met regulators investigating the failed savings and loan bank of Charles Keating, a McCain contributor. I am, of course, relieved uh, that uh, I have been exonerated. An investigation cleared McCain of wrongdoing, but rebuked him for poor judgment. The episode sent McCain on a crusade to clean up Washington, pushing campaign finance reform, fighting big tobacco, railing against earmarks. That's our obligation and our duty to the American people. Everything with passion. Humor. He's very direct. He's also very funny. He has a way of uh, uh, sort of uh, Pick, teasing people he likes. And thanks for the question, you little jerk. He was a little jerk. And a famous temper. And be a complete jerk to, <laughs> to his closest friends and hug you dearly next. In the fall of 1999, McCain announced his candidacy for president. As an underdog, he got attention by being constantly available to reporters aboard his bus, the Straight Talk Express. He trounced frontrunner George W. Bush in the New Hampshire primary, but then lost South Carolina, where it got ugly and personal. McCain soon dropped out and returned to the Senate even more determined to work across the aisle with Democrats like Ted Kennedy on issues like a patient's bill of rights and immigration reform. I announce my candidacy 
for President of the United States. In 2008, his second presidential bid. This time, he was the heir apparent. But McCain's support for a surge of troops in Iraq and bipartisan work on immigration reform hurt him with GOP voters. His poll numbers plunged. He held town halls in New Hampshire, talked border security instead of immigration reform, and climbed back. The fact that you're getting a second chance, sir, what, are the, what does that say to you? It means that uh, we are happy at where, how far we've come. After securing the GOP nomination, he had to pick a running mate. Close friend, Democrat-turned-independent Joe Lieberman was his first choice. So I hear. <laughs> he never told you that? No, he did. Aides convinced McCain that Lieberman's support for abortion rights made it impossible. McCain still went bold. First term Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. At first, Palin helped McCain draw conservative support he was lacking. But after some bizarre interviews, many campaign aides considered her a liability. Putin rears his head and, and uh, comes into the airspace of the United States. McCain would never say he regretted choosing Palin. He doesn't talk about it. No. Ever. And he never will. The economic collapse in September 2008 ultimately sealed McCain's defeat. Still, he worked to stay out of gutter politics, taking the mic from a voter who claimed Barack Obama was Arab. No, no man. No, and giving a concession speech that marked the historic moment for the country. This is an historic election, and I recognize the special significance it has for African Americans and for the special pride that must be theirs tonight. McCain settled into life as a senior statesman, fulfilled a dream of becoming Senate Armed Services Chairman, and traveled around the world every chance he got, an informal diplomat and an informed senator. When President Trump was elected, McCain took it upon himself to reassure world leaders, visiting 26 countries and four continents in the first six months of 2017 alone. Even at age 80, McCain liked to travel with and mentor younger senators in both parties, forging close relationships. He is loyal to his friends. He loves his country. And if he has to stand up to his party for his country, so be it. He would die for this country. I love him to death. His July 2017 brain cancer diagnosis and treatment for it forced McCain to slow down. But he hated pity. This is how he always wanted to be remembered, paraphrasing his political hero, Teddy Roosevelt. I've had the most wonderful life and career that anybody you will ever meet. Thank you. Dana Bash, CNN, Washington. It should come as no surprise. The tributes are pouring in for Senator McCain. In his adopted state of Arizona, flags were lowered a half staff yesterday. He represented that state in Washington, D.C., first in the House of Representatives, then in the Senate, for over 30 years. I want to go to Stephanie Elam in Sedona, Arizona right now. She's outside John McCain's ranch, uh, where I know you've seen a couple of extraordinary sights uh, there, Stephanie, in the last day or two. Talk to us about it. It's true, Christy, just to see um, how well organized the family has been preparing for this. And from what we gather, how much a part of the planning the senator was himself and how everything would transpire after his passing. Uh, we know that he loved it out here in Sedona uh, at the cabin, as they referred to it, which is about a mile up the road behind me. And this is where he spent his final days in this very beautiful part of the country, uh, no doubt about that. And as the news spread yesterday afternoon, we saw people here coming by, dropping off flowers, uh, dropping off signs, one couple just coming and bringing an American flag and dropping it off uh, here for for the, the iconic son of Arizona, uh, as he had become after serving six terms as a U.S. Senator here. So we saw a lot of that response uh, starting to show yesterday. And as you take a look and you listen to, to Dana's uh, story there about his life and how humble he was about all that he was able to accomplish in his life, I want you to take a listen to the Senator back when he was, uh, you know, putting on his bid for the highest office in the land in 2000. And he spoke to uh, CNN's Larry King and listen to who he hoped uh, his appearance on some news uh, magazines who it might impress. Take a listen. Monday morning across America, the news magazines came out and this man 
made the cover of all three of the biggies. He's Senator John McCain, Republican of Arizona. What did you make when you saw the three magazines Monday? First, well, I mean, I thought, how did how'd you feel? Well, I thought that I never thought I'd live that long. <laughs> 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 Obviously, I think it's good. It sounds a little corny, but uh, one of the things I thought of is I, I, I think this might impress my children. Really? Yeah, because my kids, you know, uh, an old geezer like me, you know, it's hard to get, <laughs> get their appreciation. <laughs>